Hello, and welcome back to Chapter 9. Today we're going to start Section 9.3, which deals with geometric sequences and series. And if you recall back to Section um, 9.2, when we talked about arithmetic sequences, um, we were dealing with a common difference. Today, with the geometric sequences and series, we're going to be dealing with what we call a common ratio. So if we look at a sequence, um, we want to go ahead and look to see that we have a common ratio between two consecutive terms, and it does have to be consecutive terms. So if we look at um, a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, these as being terms, um, to verify or to check and see if they are geometric, we need to go ahead and take two consecutive terms and find the ratio. So I'm going to take my second term and divide it by my first term, which is what I have here. And I'll get some number or value r. And if I can take my third term and divide it by my second term and get that same r value and continue to do this for each term, in this case a sub 4 minus, or divided by a sub 3, as long as I'm getting that same value r, then I can say that this sequence is geometric because of that common ratio, which is our R value that we keep finding when we um, divide these out. For example one, it says the sequence whose nth term is 2 to the nth power is geometric. That's because if I were to go and find the first few terms of this sequence, I know that 2 to the first is going to give me 2, 2 to the second is going to give me 4, 2 to the third is going to give me 8, 2 to the 4th is going to give me 16, 2 to the 5th is 32, and so on. So if I were to go and calculate the ratio, I'm going to take my second term and divide it by my first term, which is going to give me 4 divided by 2, or 2. Now for this to be geometric, I'm going to have to verify that if I take my fourth term and divide it by my third term, which is 16 divided by 8, I still get 2. Now I could have taken my third term here and divided it by my second term here, which was 8 divided by 4, which also gives me 2. I can take 32 and divide it by 16 and also get 2. So because I get this common ratio of 2, when I divide two consecutive terms out, this tells me I have a geometric sequence with a common ratio or an R value equal to 2. Now for part B it says to find R when the given um, the following sequence of 12, 36, 108, and 324. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to start looking for my um, ratios. And I'm going to take 36 and divide it by 12, which is 3. Let's make that a little bigger. Oops, that wasn't the eraser. So 3, I can, if you want to, you really could jump ahead to 324 and divide that by 108. So 324 divided by 108 is still 3. And if you want to pick a third point, then you can do your 108 divided by 36 and see that you will still get 3. So what this tells me then is my common ratio, or my R value, is equal to 3. The one thing I want to caution you all on, though, is not every sequence is either geometric or arithmetic. Sometimes you'll find that they don't follow a pattern at all. So in this case, and let's look at this example here where we're given 1, 4, 9, and 16. If I look to see if it's or arithmetic, all I have to do is say 4 minus 1, so this difference here is going to give me 3. This difference here is going to give me 5, so I don't even have to go any farther, and I can see that this is not arithmetic because I do not have a common difference. So we'll say not arithmetic. Okay, now I can also double check to see if it's geometric, and I can look for that common ratio. So then I can go 4 divided by 1 equals 4. 9 divided by 4 is 9 fourths. And last time I checked, 4 is not equal to 9 fourths. Therefore, this is not geometric either. Okay, so if you have um, problems like that in your homework, then you can just state that it's not geometric or it's not arithmetic. And that is okay. 
Now, we have the nth term of a geometric sequence, and we have a formula just like we had back with the arithmetic sequences, um, and this formula is given to us right here, and it says that a sub n term is equal to my first term, a sub 1, times my common ratio r raised to the n minus 1 power, or the previous term. So what this means is if I have a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, and so on, I'm going to, actually the, the math I'm going to do to find all these is my a sub 1 term, there's nothing I can do. I'm just going to take what I start out with and leave it as a sub 1. However, to find my a sub 2 term, I'm going to take my previous term or my a sub 1 term, and I'm going to multiply that by r, or my common ratio. Then if I want to find my third term, I'm going to take that a sub 1 term that was given to me back here, and I'm going to multiply that by my r value raised to the 3 minus 1, or the second power. And I'm getting that 3 minus 1 up here. I'm plugging 3 in for my n value, subtracting 1, and that's going to give me this second power here. Likewise, if I want to do my fourth term, I'm going to multiply it by that first term, a sub 1, times r to the 4 minus 1, or the third power. And I'm going to continue this pattern for each term that I need to solve for. Now, on the opposite side of that, if we know the nth term, okay, we can actually find the next term, or the oops, sorry, let me get my pen back, the n plus 1 term, okay, by taking our term a sub n and multiplying it by that common ratio. So in other words, if I want to find a sub n plus 1, okay, and this is assuming I know what my a sub n term is, and if you recall, this n plus 1 means just the next term, Okay, I'm really going to take my a sub n term and just multiply it by my common ratio r. And we are going to do this in example here coming up. Now example 2 says to write the first five terms of the geometric sequence um, whose a sub 1 value is equal to 2 and the common ratio is 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out, they gave me that my a sub 1 term is equal to 2, and I know that a sub 2 is equal to that a sub 1 term times my r value, which in this case is 4. So 2 times 4 is 8. If I want to solve for my a sub 3 value, I can use the first equation that we just talked about and say my a sub 1 value times my r, which is 4, raised to the 3 minus 1, which is really 2. So that gives me 2 times 16, which is really 32. Or, because I know my nth term, or my previous term was 8, I could really take that 8 and multiply it by my common ratio, r, and still get 32. So this over here deals with the equation a sub n plus 1 is equal to my a sub n term, which in this a, a sub n was actually a sub 2, times that r value. Okay, so that's how we're finding the stuff in red. Now let's go back and find our fourth term, or a sub 4. This is really equal to a sub 1 times my common ratio r raised to the 4 minus 1, or my third term, and that's going to give me 128, or again, off to the side here, because I know my third term was 32, I could go 32 times 4 and still get my 128. And for my fifth term, I have a sub 5 is equal to 2 times 4 to the 5 minus 1, which is really to the fourth. And this equals 512, or you could have done 
128 times 4 and gotten 512 as well. Example 3 says to find the nth term where or of the geometric sequence when a sub 1 equals 4 and r equals 1 half. Well, because I'm only given my a sub 1 term and my r value, I'm limited to what I can use for equations. Here, I have to use the a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. So I'm going to say a sub 9, or my ninth term, is equal to 4 times my r value, which is 1 half, raised to the n minus 1, which is really 8. And when I do that, I see that I get 4 times, remember when we're distributing powers, that 8 goes on to the 1 and the 2. So this really becomes um, 1 divided by 2 to the 8, and 2 to the 8 is 256. And if I simplify this fraction, I have 4 divided by 256, which is really 1 64th. In example 4, we're going to look for the 10th term when we're given the sequence. And the sequence is 6, negative 2, and 2 thirds, and it continues on. So really, even though they don't tell us, this first term here is really my a sub 1 term, which is 6. And now all I have to do is find my common ratio. So if I go negative 2 divided by 6, I see that this gives me a negative 1 third. Now let's go ahead and check one more time. I should have 2 thirds divided by a negative 2. I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal, and I see that I still end up with a negative 1 third. So these right here are really my r values. So if I have a sub 1 is equal to 6, and r is equal to a negative 1 third, I'm going to use um, the equation that a sub 10 is equal to my first term, which was 6, times my common ratio of a negative 1 third to the n minus 1 power, or to the ninth power. When I distribute that, I see that I get 6 times 1 divided by, now 3 to the ninth power, and this is a negative, I apologize, is really 1,000, or I'm sorry, 19,683. And I believe if you put this in your calculator and you try to go um, use the math function to convert it to a fraction, it will not convert to a fraction. So I would suggest that you distribute your exponents like you've been taught to do in um, this class and in previous courses as well. Um, now what I see is if I reduce this fraction that we will actually get a negative 2 divided by 6,561. And that would be your 10th um, term. Now example 5, um, this is probably a little bit more tricky um, than some of the examples that we've already done, but this one says that the second term of a geometric sequence is negative 18. So I know a sub 2 is equal to a negative 18, and the fifth term is 2 thirds. So a sub 5 then is equal to 2 thirds. Now from this, these two pieces of information, we want to find the sixth term. Now the way we're going to set this up is we know that the fifth term, a sub 5, really we, have to, we, we need to know the a sub 2 term to get to the fifth term. So I'm going to use that a sub 2 term as part of my equation. Now if I use a sub 2, then I'm going to have to multiply that to my n minus 1. Now that is if I'm looking for consecutive terms. Now in this case, I'm still going to use my n, which is my 5, but now I'm going to subtract my second term because I'm using the second term here. So I'm going to go 5 minus 2, and from that, I can simplify this down as a sub 2 times r to the third power. 
And I'm going to plug in all the pieces that I know so I can go and calculate my R value. Once I know my R value, then I can find my sixth term. So I know that A sub 5 is equal to 2 thirds. I also know that A sub 2, and I'm going to use this equation here since that's simplified, A sub 2 was equal to a negative 18, and I don't know what R is, but it is cubed. So from this piece of information, I can solve for R. So R cubed is equal to 2 thirds divided by 18, which is really a negative 1 divided by 27. And if I cube root both sides, um, let's slide this up here. If we cube root both sides so that we can get R by itself, then I see that R is really equal to a negative one-third. Okay, and I'm going to have to use that piece of information now um, to solve my sequence uh, to find the sixth term. So because I know my R value and I also know my fifth term, I can use the equation of A sub N is equal to I'm sorry, a sub n, and that should be plus 1, is equal to a sub n times r. Because the sixth term is one more term than my fifth term. So a sub 6 is equal to my a sub 5 term, which we said was 2 thirds, times my r value, which was a negative 1 third, and if I multiply these out, 2 times a, ne times a negative 1 will give me a negative 2. 3 times 3 is 9. So my sixth term of this sequence is a negative 2 ninths. And this is actually where we're going to stop for part 1 of section 9.3. We will continue on with 9.3 part 2 after spring break. But it is time for our fun fact of the day. Now, this is according to um, funfact.com, and it's actually fun fact number 1300, but this fact says, was it a car or a cat I saw? This is the only phrase, supposedly in English, that when read in reverse will be the same. So, was, or, yeah, was it a car or a cat I saw? It works both ways. On that note, have a good spring break, and I will see you on Monday, April 8th, I believe. Happy Easter.